Good morning to you all, and welcome to our worship uh, today, Sunday, the 7th of June. Today is Trinity Sunday, the Sunday that we celebrate God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the mystery, but also the wonderful journey that we are invited to, and to be one with God each and every day. I hope that you had a wonderful week, and welcome as we come together this morning in His name. Just one or two intimations that we would like to share with you this morning. Uh, firstly, our Sunday School is available online on the church website. Do join us there for a story and the activities and also a video clip that you can access from Facebook. Uh, that will also assist with some of uh, the Sunday School material. Also, the church office is still remotely opened uh, during the week, Monday to Friday, 9.30 to 12.30. Kirsty is available through the church office landline and also the mobile number on the website. Then um, a reminder that there is still the weekly prayer moment at 7 o'clock tonight when all the churches over Scotland join in prayer as we pray for the world and especially also for our country during this time. And then a kind reminder, if you would like to volunteer and assist our care group or if you are in need of any assistance, do not hesitate. To contact Ian or Kathleen Thompson or any of the volunteers involved, they will get in touch with you and try to assist as far as possible. Today we come together in the name of God and we worship Him as the, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And on this Trinity Sunday we are reminded that God opened Himself up as a Father to us through the Son and by the life-giving comfort of His Holy Spirit. Therefore we come to bring glory to God for all the great things that he have done. Let us therefore sing hymn 512, To God be the glory, great things he has done, hymn 512.
hope that you had a wonderful week. I hope that the homeschooling is going well and that you are able uh, perhaps to do some uh, nice crafts and activities today with us uh, as uh, there are some wonderful things on the church website for the Sunday School. I know the weather is a bit uh, damp and windy outside, so go and do some wonderful indoor activities. I hope also that uh, you are still well and safe and uh, that you are enjoying the company of those around you. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. The Trinity is a, a wonderful concept and perhaps let me explain it a little bit today. We know that God has three elements to him and therefore we always talk about God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. The best way of describing this unity, because the Trinity also tells us that God is a unit, a unity in himself, is to um, have an egg. Now, I would have had an egg here this morning, but I don't want to jump on the floor. I might get in trouble. So, but if you go and crack an egg, you would see that the egg has got three elements. We have the shell, which reminds us of God the Father, who created everything. We have Jesus, the Son of God. Uh, the egg white that tells us something about Jesus being our savior, making our lives pure, and he sacrificed himself for us. And then we have the egg yoke in the middle, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the love giver and the comforter um, that God sent to the world. And yes, we can split the three elements um, out of each other, but to be really an egg, you have to have all three elements together. So an egg is an egg although we have the three definite elements in it to be an egg we have to have all three and that is how god works for god to be god we have to acknowledge all three perhaps the elements that we uh, know about god god the father who created everything jesus the one that gave himself for us and love us and make our lives pure and the holy spirit that comforts us and and keeps us safe now today um, on the Sunday School material, we are seeing something of the Trinity when God created the world. We read that the Spirit um, was covering um, the, the earth, that God the Father saw this creation and decided that he wants to make something new. And in John 1, we read that he spoke through Jesus and everything was created through the Word. Now, I would like to invite you to go onto Facebook. There's a wonderful video about the creation story of Genesis 1. So have a look at that and also join us for the story and activities. And from me and everyone here at the house, I hope that you have a wonderful week. Enjoy the homeschooling, stay safe, and we hope to see each other very soon again. Have a great day. But before we go, let's sing a hymn together. A hymn that tells us uh, that God is here because he loves us and he gave everything for us the bible uh, and all the wonderful people around us so that we can know of his love and uh, of his presence in our life each and every day it was once told that a great theologian uh, with the name of Karl Barth once sat in an airport and a lady asked him mr Barth, you are a great theologian how do you understand everything in the bible and apparently, so the story goes, he told her, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. So let's sing together uh, our hymn this morning, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the, for the Bible tells me so. And it's hymn number 564.
is Sunday, we are reminded of uh, the holiness of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So let us join together in our prayer this morning as we acknowledge and celebrate the Trinity also through our speaking to God this morning. Let us pray together. Holy, 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 let angels cry who see and know you face to face. Blessed are you, maker of all from nothing. Blessed are you, saviour of all from sin. Blessed are you, spirit of all, in all and through all. Blessed are you, God alone, yet God in community. Blessed, O God, your church on earth, with the harmony and diversity of heaven, that we may be one as you are one. Holy are you, God, our Maker. Holy are you, Christ, our Saviour. Holy are you, Spirit and Sanctifier. Surrounded by the community of saints, you live in community, three yet one, diverse yet united. Be a model for us of how the church must live. Be a model for us of how our communities must be healthy. Be a model for us of how in ourselves we must be whole and holy. God, our Father, Mother, Creator and Protector, made in your image, we adore you. Christ, our brother, friend, servant and saviour, converted by your love, we adore you. Holy Spirit, our inspirer, comforter, counsel and defender, blessed by your presence, we adore you. God, three in one, whose nature we acknowledge as mystery, we praise you for every sign of your care, for your variety of gifts, and for every way in which you help, heal, and uphold us. And now, God, as we continue our prayer, we join the Church Universal in the words that your Son taught us, something about your kingdom and something about the unity that we are inspired to when we say the words, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Psalm 8. There are many passages in the Bible that we would be able to use um, this morning to help us to understand the Trinity. But perhaps our focus this morning is on God being mindful of us, God thinking of us, and God in, in all his thoughts and in all his creation still has this very special bond with his children. And one of the, the passages in the Bible that best describes this is Psalm 8. So join me as we read from God's Word, Psalm 8, from verse 1. A Psalm of David Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies, to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels, and crown them with glory and honour. You have made them rulers over the work of your hands. You have put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, 
the birds in the skies and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Praise be to God for his holy word. Amen. To be fair, Psalm 8 is not necessarily a very natural text to use uh, on Trinity Sunday. It is part of the lectionary readings for today, uh, with Genesis 1 as well as Matthew 28. All these readings for today does have one thing in common. It reflects on the Trinity and it reflects that the Trinity works through creation. And Psalm 8, especially verse 4, tells us something of the mindfulness of God, but also that through all, God created not only life, but everything in creation that we share and enjoy. It reminds me of a story that I once uh, uh, heard and I would like to share it with you this morning. The fine preacher George Buttrick was once on an aeroplane uh, scribbling out sermon notes on his legal pad. The man next to him asked what he was doing and Buttrick answered, I am working on Sunday's sermon. I am a minister. Oh yeah, the man replied, religion. I like to keep my religion simple. I don't like complicated doctrines. I do unto others as you would have done to unto yourself. The golden rule, that is my religion. I see, Reverend Buttrick replied. And what is it that you do? Well, I teach uh, in the science department at the university. I am an astronomer. Ah, yes, astronomy, Buttrick shot back. Well, I don't like to get very technical about things, uh, such uh, about such things. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. That's my astronomy. Why would anyone ever need more than that? I like the story, not because Butchik was uh, as uh, as witty as can be but because we sometimes have to grasp the nettle of some diff difficult concepts, even within uh, our journey with Christ. The Trinity perhaps one of them. Difficult sometimes to comprehend the three in one uh, uh, and the, the, the unity within the diversity of God, but perhaps the image of the egg that we used in the children's address is something that we can, can use, the whole idea that an egg is only an egg if it has those three elements the shell, the egg white, the yolk. And we, we can only see the full prism of God once we understand that God is Father of creation, His Son our Saviour, and the Spirit our Comforter. But that brings us back to the question, but why does God want to have anything to do with us? If He is so all-powerful and almighty and omnipresent, why is it that God has always had us on his mind. It reminds me of that country song, You Were Always On My Mind, because in Psalm 8 we read that we are always on God's mind. There's something very special about the reading uh, from Psalm 8 this morning. Something that reminds us uh, of not only God's presence, but the active um, work of God in our lives. The fact that God is not somewhere in a distance looking at us, but that He is indeed an active and participating God in our lives. The, the psalm writer says uh, in, in verse, verse 4 quite rightly, What is it that you are mindful of us, human beings, that you care for them? I hear the words of Jesus ringing uh, from John 3 verse 16, because God so loved the world that he was willing to give his only son. I hear Christ praying in John 17, saying, God, may they be through your spirit, may they be one with us. Praying for the world, praying for his disciples, praying for us at that very moment, if you remember John 17 from our previous sermons. Yes, Psalm 8 is perhaps a wonderful collective summary 
of how God interacts in our lives and, and brings us closer to him uh, each and every day. There, there's something of, of the nature of God that is revealed um, within Psalm 8. Perhaps something that has been revealed in our own lives over the last few weeks. The, the fact that as we were locked down in our homes, we became more mindful of each other. Perhaps in our families, we dusted off the Scrabble and we started playing some of the old board games. I can certainly attest that in our own house with the children, we were suddenly more mindful of each other, trying to understand how we interact with one another, trying to understand uh, what we are feeling and what we are doing and how we are doing that. There was suddenly a bit of a mindfulness that was always there, uh, but remember suddenly being in the house 24-7 for many weeks, you had to adjust. We had to adjust into this new way of life. We had to adjust um, coming together as a family. It has always been like that. But you just become so much more aware being mindful of family and friends that are far, those who we had to call, those who we had to keep in contact with. We were mindful of their feelings. We were mindful of the emotional state. And it's something of that mindfulness that we have experienced over the last few weeks that makes it easier for me to understand how God is always, always mindful of me. There's a story um, that is uh, reflected in the movie uh, A Beautiful Mind when Professor John Nash was standing at the governor's house speaking to who would have the lady who would later become his wife. And she was describing a painting to John Nash. He was standing next to her and she was describing this wonderful picture to him. And she said, God must have been an artist. So that this beautiful painting, this beautiful light that is reflected through the strokes of the brush, that this became such a complete picture. Nash never replied on her remark. A few weeks later, he gathered the courage to ask her out on a, on a, on a date, a meal. And as they were sitting in the restaurant, um, he gave her a gift. And as she opened it, it was indeed a crystal. A crystal that if you kept it to the light, you suddenly saw the different strokes of light reflecting through the crystal. And then she replied to him, she said, I never thought that you listened to me because you never replied when I made the remark about the painting. And John Nash replied, yes. I was listening indeed. It's something that we sometimes experience in our relationship with God. That sometimes as we pray, that it feels for us as if our prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. Uh, that God doesn't listen to us because he doesn't necessarily reply immediately. And although Paul writes in, in Romans 8 that the Holy Spirit always intercedes on our behalf before God, praying before God according to God's will for us, it does not take away the fact that we sometimes feel that God's not listening, God's not here, that God forgot us somewhere along the line. And I must confess that perhaps during this lockdown period, there might have been moments when we thought, well, where is God in all of this? Has God forgotten about us? Is God mindful of us? Is God remembering us? And Psalm 8. Psalm 8 once again places it on our hearts that we worship a mindful God. A God that knows us emotionally. A God that knows our strengths and weaknesses. A God that embraces us for who we are and for how we feel sometimes because God has got us on his mind 24 7 not only during a lockdown 
but from birth until that moment when we pass on into eternal life of him that is how mindful god is about each one of us that's how carefully god nurtures us in our journey of faith even though we sometimes might feel that he doesn't reply immediately he does he does through his creation through the work of his fingers the moon and the stars the psalm writer writes which you have set in your place verse uh, 3 of psalm 8 when david says that we you have made us just a little lower than angels you crowned us with glory and honor you, god loved us so much that he sent his son god made us rulers of his creation and we not always doing such a grand job with that and perhaps that the text also helps us to become more mindful not only of god but also of the people around us of god's creation as we look around us in this this new world that we are stepping in that there's something also that we need to acknowledge that as god's managers in this world we we need to think harder on how to love one another how to comfort one another and how we treat one another in this world because god gave this world to us it's our world but god also challenges us to be mindful of it to know from the text that god is always mindful of me listening to me and caring and loving me is a wonderful promise and it sustains us during difficult times but it's also a challenge a challenge to look at creation and to look at the world around us and to ask how mindful are we of one another may god help us and lead us in this journey may he through his own mindfulness assist us to carry on with the message of hope the message of love and the message of the comfort that we experience through jesus christ our lord and through the work of the holy spirit god three in one but also a diversified union of which we, as his children, are part of. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. We come together once more in prayer to intercede for our world, but also to give thanks that we are able to live every day in the presence of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Son and Holy Spirit, on this Trinity Sunday we give you thanks that you are three in one, but also in the diversity we find a unity and that we may be one with you. We thank you, Lord, for creation. We thank you that you have made us your children, that through your life, through the gift of life, through your guiding hand and through your sustaining love, me, we may share your friendship, that we may share your duty, that we may teach each other to trust you and to be with you. God and Father of us all, through your creation you also sent your Son into our world to be our Saviour and friend. He also gave us Holy Spirit to be our comforter, to be part of your body. Therefore, Lord, we also pray this morning for your church, for its ministry and for all its means of grace. In our weakness, Lord, you are our strength. In our darkness, our light. In our sorrows, our comfort and peace. You are the everlasting to everlasting. You are our God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. One God, glorified forever. We therefore give you thanks for the world that we live in. Because, loving God, you care for us as your children. You know each one and you hear each of our prayers. You know each house and see each need. 
Give peace and love to those who call upon you and receive us into the kingdom of your light. Bless those who need comfort today, all those who are in trouble or pain. Heal those who are sick, support those who are dying, console those who mourn, supply the wants of those who need who are in need, and be near to those whom we now know, name in silence. Bless our church here and everywhere. Confirm your people in the faith of the gospel. Inspire us with love for your body, zeal in your service, and joy in the well-being of your kingdom. Bless our queen and those who govern over us, especially those ministers and counsellors in Westminster Holyrood, as well as in our local council in Murray that they may fulfill their duties for the welfare of the people and the glory of your name. Lord, bless the whole world with peace. Kindle in the hearts of all people the true love of peace and guide us with your wisdom, all the leaders of the nations, that your kingdom may advance until the earth be filled with the knowledge of your love. Lord, bless our homes. Bless those who are in need today, who are struggling. But also, we thank you for the joy of those who are happy today. We pray, Lord, that whether in sorrow or in darkness, or whether in happiness and in light, that your love and joy will dwell with us. And that those who are absent today from us, that you will protect them with your love. Lord, we pray all of this, not because we are deservant of everything, but because your grace and love enfolds us this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray this. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Hymn 5, a wonderful hymn that is a, a, a paraphrase of the wording uh, from Psalm 8, on a lovely Scottish a tune, traditional tune, O Lord, our Lord, throughout the earth. <laughs>
once again. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. May you have a blessed week. May you know that God is always mindful of us, of our needs, our emotional needs, our spiritual needs, always there to listen to us, to encourage us, and to sustain us. But let us also be mindful of one another this week through our support and our comfort and our love. Go in the peace of the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us, to carry us, to sustain us, to give us hope and to love us now and evermore. Amen. As usual, we close our service by singing hymn 786, May the God of Peace be with us. May this week be a week filled with God's blessing. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.